Welcome to Satisfactory. My name is Nilaus. This is a base tour of the base I created during my 32 hour stream this Satisfactory weekend. So I am, um, it will illustrate some of the things that I've learned while building the base or while learning the game. And I think it's interesting because there are probably some design ideas that you can get inspired by when the game launches. And I've been asked for this by a number of viewers who really wanted to sort of have a walkthrough of the base. So here we are, we're standing on top of the hub. There are many different parts of it. The overall idea is that I have specific areas that each create one specific thing. And then I wall them off in factories by themselves where they take raw materials in and then produce, produce the end product. And I do have some trucks set up as well, but that's kind of limited. Okay, so let's, uh, let's start by going out. We have a watchtower here where we can see the whole thing. We'll start by sort of a, from an archaeological perspective of the oldest parts of the base first. Some of the things that most of my base has been converted into this way of moving. So I can move up and down easily between platforms and safely when I land. Right, we are going to take the sugar cube to drive around the base and have a look. And let's start with this space to our right. This is one of the first platforms, or this is the first platform that I raised. One of the key parts of the design here is that I don't want to build at the ground level because the ground level goes up and down. I want to build on platforms secret and have the secret paths between them. So this one, pretty simple, very basic, but great to have going. So we can take it. It takes one iron ore in over here, coming from downstairs, obviously and splitting it so that one row here produces iron plates and the other one splits out and produces iron rods. Pretty good. We just, we can come by here and grab it. Eventually it can also be set up in different ways. Right, let's see, where should we go next? I'll go this way just for the fun of it. Go to the next platform. All right, so here we are on the next platform. This is, whoa, I used a parachute. That's why I'm not dead. Let's grab a new one because I'm probably gonna need another one. All right, so this location is where I make my biofuel and this was one of my original, was the original power plant. Basically when I go out into the world and come back with a lot of biofuel, I put in the leaves here and the wood in that box. They go in, become biomass and become biofuel and then yes we can jump this one i love that you can jump on buildings and goes in here and then becomes a box of biofuel that i once in a while can go back and empty fitting into this row of biomass burners which supported our base this is currently idle you can see all the red markers because i have not used biofuel for fuel except at this location this location is a separate network that is only supporting the construction of more biofuel. I put that on a separate network because I wanted to make sure that it continued to run even if the rest of the base shut down. So I think that's a good idea and uh, something to consider. Let's run back here. We can see some of the parts that I have not upgraded is down here. We have our concrete production. This is still on the ground level. Over there was our initial production construction and we've just uh, removed it again when we started moving upstairs here we have a truck where is the truck there should be a truck oh yeah it's coming let's get out of the way and our good friend who's flying a bit too close to some of our bases all right so that was this part of the base then let's uh, have a look at some other parts some of the more advanced construction these were the first two platforms i built and I did not design them to include the platform, the jump pads, so they kind of did that. And of course, we have the absolutely beautiful space elevator here. And let's take a right here and head to our reinforced plate platform. All of these, these sacred paths, if you, and then we use our patented column of parking. This one, mm, let's find somewhere where we can jump up. Down here. This is, well, if it's not idle, of course, producing reinforced iron plates. Again, taking 60 iron ore in, 
splitting into making iron plates and making screws. This belt has to be a Mark II in order to keep going. We just take some of these out so we can see it hopefully get back in action. Right, so this one is uh, is operational. You can see all the yellow blinking lights because it's, it's just running idle. Basically, all the base is running idle. We'll get to that one later because that's kind of the end. There, it's working. This one is a Mark II belt and I use these power shots to increase it so that it is a perfect ratio. This side here taking 40 iron per, per minute and this one taking 20 iron per minute, thereby when it's operational consuming a full belt, full Mark I belt. All right, we'll leave that base. So those are the first bases. The next base I have is the rotor base. I really enjoy the driving around here. <clears throat> it is, for all intents and purposes, pretty much the same as the other one. Uh, it's producing rotors in abundance. Let's jump up here on this one again. All right, again, idle. This is not built to ratio, but pretty close. This side is producing iron rods and the other side is producing screws again here if you look at this one it takes 132 screws but that's more than one belt i did not bother to make it completely accurate so i put 18 in and 120 in and it's all right because as you can see it is idle more than it's anything else so these factories are pretty consistent they produce basically just one of them let's actually jump let's go here take a bit of a detour Let's look at some of our, our vehicle optimization. You can see there are starting to be some blue arrows here on the map. Let's have a look this side. Yep, we have a truck coming. But we'll make it faster. So we have a truck stop over here. This location is a fueling station for coal basically i wanted to test the automation let's make absolutely sure we don't get in get our inventory full of coal by getting near that one because that kind of happens uh, right quite often so basically what we have here is a bit of a tower coming from our coal deposit going up 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 snaking its way up going in getting stored and then getting filled in let's jump up here we get the truck coming in, you can see here, it goes both into the fuel and into this part. I wonder if I could jump on this one, just so we can hitch a ride for it, hitch a ride on. Whoops, well, that's close enough. All right, little truck, move along. I will unfortunately lose my... <clears throat> I unfortunately lose my truck, but we have a way of getting back there pretty efficiently. So this is just standing on top of our self-driving vehicle. If I jump in, then I can, however, look in the workbench while driving. And we can enjoy the ride. I really love the fact that they have autonomous vehicles in the first Alpha. We are here going, heading towards the arch and towards Mount Toplerone. We're not going quite there. We're going to this fueling station. So these, this is a factory where I started just testing how it would work with uh, with production here. So this station is taking out coal, putting it in here, and the coal is then moved into a storage and then also moved back in as fuel for future. And then for some reason it decides to go back and forward. Not exactly optimal, but who cares? So you can see here that this one line over here is also full of coal which is the one I'm using for storage and yeah they're a bit too close let's actually jump off here because I have an idea on how we get back to the other place faster can we get it faster than the truck can we make it probably can Oh yeah, we can, easily. Barely. We can make it. 
So all they need to have the green jellos to jump down. And always have some jump pads to jump up. And we made it before the truck. Nice. Let's get our own little truck and then move on, on to the next area. There's a bit of drive to get there, but... Uh, so let's see. What have we shown now? Let's actually have a look at the next the more advanced production plants and then end up at our coal plants at the end. So now we look at getting over to the part you see raised platform over at the distance. That is our copper production. I wanted to build it a bit more advanced setup. So let's have a look at how that works. And it's just an absolutely beautiful world. And I can see how this is just going to be all turned into one big factory one day. It's going to be beautiful. I do have a propensity to build large broad boulevards here. They are the sacred paths that my community are somewhat uh, accustomed to. Going back to the biofuel and the iron production. Heading over to the copper. This copper is obviously way too big, but it serves a purpose. Uh, let's park the truck by here. That's a great place to park it. And let's show us our more innovative ways of transporting ourselves here. Moving up. Here we go. And let's see, do we have a tower? Yes, we do have a tower, so let's jump to the tower and have a look at this one. All right, so this one, first, Get a new parachute. I have to take one in because every time I do it, it uses the parachute, it uses all of them. This is the beautiful part. You can see the iron ore is coming in here. Uh, sorry, copper ore going in, getting split. This is 120 in, 60 to either side. Going out here on this side, making... I'll take this one first, it's simpler. Comes 60 in, gets split, 33 each side, gets made into cables. 30, 30 cables, I think it's 30 cables, and that goes out, 120 cables per minute going down and becomes available at the bottom after the storage, of course. Likewise, on the other side, we get 60 in, goes out, splits 33 this either side, goes in here, becomes cables, goes up to 120 cables, goes splits into three, 40 in each, and that's how much we can do to make, oh, sorry, wires becoming cables. You can see the cables here, a bit uh, too advanced, you could say, but uh, it works. Gets stored and gets taken down again. There are room for four in this setup, four paths, either up or down. It is quite a, I'm quite happy with this design. Only thing I'm not happy about is the fact that I am... It, the pillar in the middle here is not in the middle, which kind of sucks. All right, we jump down. And we get back to the other, to the car. Bloop. And let's grab the car and take a look at the coal production, because that's basically another design that's interesting. Nah, let's not take coal. Let's take do coal last because there's a bit of a trek over there. So that's the more advanced. It takes uses one copper facility. Now let's drive over here to the most advanced facility we have built to date. And that's the modular frames. So modular frames is a bit more complicated because it uses, uses reinforced iron plates as input. So I decided to build a big platform. This platform will probably be a template for how I'm gonna build platforms in the middle. It doesn't look like it, but it is actually. This is what I choose to call a mushroom platform. Yes, use this power pole as an excellent place to park. There we go. Jumping up, this is how you enter the base, the only way to enter the base. And we run underneath it and then go up to our central tower. Also here, if we just look in, we have the same system here. Here we have two belts of 120 iron ore coming in, and we have the modular frames coming out. This base has not stalled yet. We're moving up here, and move up. Let's see if we're lucky if our manta ray will pay us a visit while we're up here. 
Nope, doesn't look like it. It's nowhere in sight. Good. All right, so we have our raw materials coming out here. The majority goes this way to these two. This one here is making reinforced iron plates at ratio, takes 60 iron in and makes five reinforced iron plates per minute. This is exactly the same as what we have over here. Again, that goes out all the way along the edge for flare coming to that factory, which is the one that makes modules, uh, modular frames. They are not, it's not built 100% to ratio, but somehow I just don't care about that. It's close enough and it gets into the storage. The other part of the iron ore is coming in here just to make a small smelting and then make the iron rods needed. Those are built at ratio so they match. So that's a pretty beautiful one. Where is our moth? I really wanted to see it. Oh, it's over there. It's not going to come in anytime soon. All right, let's jump down. Again, using a parachute to glide smoothly. Once you get the parachute tech, it's it's really easy. And this one is, of course, that's a, just a small bug, but who cares? Whoops, I'm able to land inside it. All right, so what we need to do now, oh, it's coming there. This one is actually tapping six iron deposits because they're and overclocking them a bit just to get enough. Now let's fast travel to our coal ore. As we fast travel, let's just talk about some of the things that's otherwise going on. I am, I am of course starting a new series on my uh, on Twitch as soon as the uh, pre-alpha is opened. So that will be part of my normal repertoire of streaming at least two times a week, and that will also be available on YouTube as well. So I will have much more content uh, of Satisfactory as soon as it comes out. And I'm also playing the Alpha just a bit. Hello truck, did you decide to not get enough fuel and park there? I guess so. And let's go through the arch towards Mount, Mount Tompleron. And here we have our coal plant, which is a nice place to, to just, just end this uh, base review since it's kind of far away from everything else. So all of what you're seeing here is the result of my streaming. I streamed a total of 32 hours, maybe only 31. Don't really, maybe lost time, lost track of time a bit. But that's, uh, and you can see the evolution from the first platform to the last platform here, how, uh, how much more advanced it got with the jump packs and all that. Here we have this up here is a, a coal deposit it is a pure deposit, so it delivers 120 per minute. Let's first have a look at something which I absolutely enjoy out here. One of the problems with building high is that you kind of, you kind of have a problem going up and down. So we built this little setup. Okay, yeah, it's moving very slow. I think everything should be green tinted when you're inside that one. But it's easy to get back up because we have jump packs. And it's an absolutely amazing way to move around the base. Whoops. There. Now let's have a look at the coal plant. Let's start by looking at how the coal gets in from the plant, from the coal mine. Here. This one producing 120 per minute. If you have one that steals less, you should overclock it to 120. Go into a small storage just to make sure we have a little buffer should something run out. All right, what we then do is let's get up top of this. 120 going in, split three ways. One, two, three. That is, ready enough, 40 to each direction. That goes now over here. Whoa, here, split two ways, 20 in each direction. Goes over here. Split two ways again, 10 in each direction. And that's the same all the way down. Each power plant take gets 10 coal and it is able to process at the maximum capacity 11 coal per minute. So this is pretty much stable, delivering 600 megawatts. And if we ever get near where it would need more than 10 per minute, then that's definitely the time for us to expand. But it looks absolutely amazing, except when running around inside. 
It is just beautiful, right? And this is extremely stable. Once you build it, you can go out and get lost in the world in a uranium cave or somewhere that's full of spiders or whatever you feel like. And it will continue to keep your base alive. And 600 megawatts from one mine is pretty good. There are two mines within reach, so that's a easy 1200. And that's how beautiful it is. And you can see from here, we can see all of our locations out in the perimeter. This one out here is our truck stop where we picked up coal. This is our main base. Uh, we have, of course, the elevator. This is our copper platform. Behind that, we can see our module frame platform. And that's basically the base tour for me. That's uh, This is the result of about 30 hours, as I said, 32 maybe. So I can't, I'm still looking forward to putting a thousand hours into this game and just looking at how magnificent the factory will be and with much more tech being uh, available. So let's uh, wrap it up. If you like what you saw, be sure to hit that like button. Uh, if you want to see more Satisfactory, then check out my Twitch can channel or my YouTube channel. And if you haven't already, well, maybe it's time to subscribe there. And I will be delivering and making a lot more satisfactory content as soon as it becomes available. So thank you very much and I'll see you around. Until next time, stay effective.